Imagine a remote-controlled aircraft that has the potential to kill anyone in the world without any warning. Pretty scary, right? As you probably know, these aircraft do exist, but they're used more often than you might think. I'm of course talking about drones, the controversial unmanned aircrafts that have come to symbolize America's current war in the Middle East, even becoming a central plot point in the TV series Homeland, which is a great show by the way. While drones have come to be associated with warfare, the term drone actually refers to a whole subcategory of robots that are already a part of life. And more and more people are taking notice. Last December, a student, Josh Begley, attempted to tweet out the entire history of US drone strikes from 2002 to the present day in 10 minutes. Not surprisingly, 10 minutes was not nearly enough time Time, and he is still, in fact, adding those strikes under the Twitter handle DroneStream to this day. And this issue was thrust once again into the limelight last month when Senator Rand Paul decided to filibuster the nomination of John Brennan for CIA director. He spent all of 12 hours questioning whether or not the president could use a drone to kill an American on American soil. I will speak today until the president responds and says, no, we won't kill Americans in cafes. No, we won't kill you at home in your bed at night. No, we won't drop bombs on restaurants. Is that so hard? Apparently it was not that hard as the White House was quick to respond with a very direct answer, no. A recent poll suggests that Americans are okay with drone attacks, as long as they're not in America. While 65% of U.S. citizens support drone attacks on terrorists abroad, that number falls to just 25 that believe the government should use them domestically for the same purpose. As the public becomes increasingly worried about the use of drones, lawmakers across America have taken notice, and many states have sought to ban or limit the use of drone aircrafts. More than 30 states have introduced drone-related legislation since January alone. But what about the potentially helpful uses of drones? Last week's Several outlets like TechCrunch and The Atlantic picked up a story about drones replacing postal workers in France. And well, that story was too good to be true. The technology is actually not that far off from commercial drones becoming a reality. Currently, domestic drone use is limited to government agencies and universities who've gotten special grants. But this will change in 2015 as the FAA is set to allow civilian drone flights in that year. Drones have the potential to replace traffic helicopters and could become extremely valuable during natural disasters such as Hurricane Sandy in helping to locate People. Last February, the FBI was able to maintain surveillance of a five-year-old boy who was being held hostage in Alabama through using drones. But the same things that make drones so useful are also what make them suspect in terms of privacy. They are small, cheap, and can spy on people often undetected. The days of sunbathing nude in your backyard would surely come to an end. Sorry, Scott. So what do you guys think? Should the government continue to limit the use of commercial drones, or should we open up the skies to the public? Let me know in the comments. For TFM, this is Annie.